Well, welcome to my review of this uh, rather beautiful Triumph Tiger XRX Low 2019 version. And I'm going to tell you why I think this is the best all rounder money can buy. Now, I bought this bike last year um, because uh, they said there would be a 12, a six month waiting list for the 850S, which I rather fancied. Um, but for me that was a whole summer's ride in and I'd, I'd been seduced by a 1200cc bike and realised that I didn't need a bike that was rocket ship fast, that could do double the speed limit and carry all the weight disadvantages of it and the licence threatening uh, qualities that those kind of bikes have and aside from the bragging rights I, I didn't really see any point in having a bike that was so unnecessarily fast I mean how fast do we need to go you know how fast is fast enough um, since doing my advanced riding test I've found that riding within the speed limits is just as enjoyable a lot safer and I sleep a lot better on my pillow at night but that's another story back to the bike I'm going to tell you why I like this bike why I prefer it over the GT Pro and the 850S and uh, and why I think it offers the best of both worlds. So first of all let's just talk about the looks. Now, looks are subjective. I quite like adventure bikes. I like that industrial look. I like these bolts and this different coloured grey on the clutch case housing and, uh, and the shape of the tank and the badge rather than a transfer here and uh, Think the bike looks okay now i'm a traditionalist because i'm old I'm not so keen on lcd screens but have to say having lived with one for a year it's nice to have the speed that big for my failing eyesight i got good long sightedness but i'm not so good at reading dials and and it's nice to have an inch 60 mile an hour limit or whatever it is in my face so that i don't uh, un un unnecessarily speed and fall foul of the eight million cameras that we've got on the english roads so a bit of peace of mind 19 inch front wheel um best of both worlds um i, I like to ride all the a roads and b roads in in the welsh hills mostly a lot of them are single track a lot of them are bumpy and 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 a 17 inch a 19 inch wheel is is a little bit more easy control than the 17 inch doesn't tend to get caught in the ruts as much and and yet when you want to get it up and play on the b roads she it's more than willing to do so i nearly said she then and i don't like calling bikes by women's notes this bike is not as pretty as my wife i can assure you that this is just a machine but it is a nice looking bike so it does go if you want to play with it the rev range Get it up to five and eight thousand revs. There's as much pep and punch and torque and power as any reasonable person could need. And, and I don't find it lacking in power at all. I find it exhilarating and fun. Yet when you want to ride it round all day, it's really easy um, to just ride around at 30 and 40 miles an hour. It's not asking any questions of you. It's not revving to go. It's just pleasant. But the fun's there when you want to have it. So again, another best of both worlds. It's got three rider modes, uh, sport, road, and rain. So frankly, if you need a rain setting on a motorbike, you, you should be riding a motorbike. Um, I've got it in sport mode, because that stiffens up the, the suspension and tweaks the um, throttle response. And and I, I find it grounds out a little bit, uh, in road, uh, in sport, not so much. It's it's a bit more throw about, throw around a ball, and, and I enjoy that. Um, so the LCD, t t this it tells you how much fuel. It, I like the fuel. It runs down, and it measures that based on the kind of riding you've been doing. So um, it's pretty accurate. And I don't like to run out of fuel. I don't like it when the um, petrol gets below the fuel pump. The fuel pump can get hot then, and that could prematurely wear out so you want to keep the petrol above the pump so I, I don't run it down less than you know I fill up when it gets to about 20 miles 
I certainly don't go under but it's pretty accurate on that it's got Brembo brakes at the front now the, the uh, Nissan in the back now these brakes are not the strongest but they're certainly not the weakest now I've just got off a day's ride in the GT Pro that had very strong brakes but they were so grabby that when you were just trying to pull up slow it was jerky and snatchy and that, that can upset your balance and make for an uncomfortable experience but when I got back on this and I grabbed some brake and nothing happened I thought they're spongy but they're not they're just progressive give it a handful this bike will stop so I'm not bothered I'm happy with the brakes um, don't know what tires they're on it but uh, I've never skidded and it gets right over and they're quiet so whatever they are I like them and I'll buy them again they're the bikes that the tires that came on the bike um, mirrors are good they don't vibrate great all-round visibility the screen adjustable like that couldn't be much easier um, and it works for me but it's I don't like criticizing screens because people are different heights and widths like I say I'm five foot eight and I don't get any very little buffeting or wind noise I have it up there and that keeps me warmer in the winter and I have it down there most of the time because it's quiet um, no problem the, the, the Tiger was first made in 2010 and then they stopped making it about 10 years later and it went through uh, two transitions so 2015 to 2017 it was upgraded from the original bike and then 2017 to 2019 there was a third generation of which this is and um, with the LCD screen um, I don't know whether they were on the second version or not but these little things here deflect a bit more wind um, and it's all rather nice headlights are fine I I'm not one of these people that needs to light up the entire planet or blind oncoming motorcyclists with all these really harshly overly bright LED lights I can see where I'm going or I go a bit slower so that's fine suspension is it's lovely it's not adjustable at the front you've got some preload on the back I tend to leave it as it is it's fine I can ride this bike I've ridden this bike for three days all day and apart from a bit of numb bum which you get on any bike she's a joy I said she again lovely bike um, in terms of the low version this saddle you can adjust it to a lower setting and push it back on there and I um, I've got about a 28 inch side leg and here I am almost flat foot in it not quite but it's quite fine it's not uh, it's not unbalanced and it does me now I've got quite um, big but short stubby fingers so both the clutch lever and the brake are adjustable so they're on the closest settings for me and they're fine that is a nice feature that you don't get on some of the cheaper bikes um, and I've got uh, short legs as well so it's low for that but one of the problems I do have is I should put some spacers on there bring them a little bit closer because I am a little bit uh, let's just say a little bit closer to that petrol tank than I would like and after some all day riding in the summer things can get uncomfortable but this little netting thing from cool covers puts about an inch or half an inch between you and the saddle lets some air circulate and things are greatly improved that's why that's on there let's talk about the engine <laughs> so it's the original Triumph 675 engine that was upgraded to 800 by giving it a longer bore longer stroke and uh, it, it, yeah I've talked about it it's fine it's all you need I've ridden this with my bike wife on the back okay yeah you might not want to overtake an articulated lorry at 90 miles an hour on the motorway but I wouldn't be doing that anyway and I wouldn't buy a bike that could go past that a little bit quicker and have that weight advantage all the rest of the time for, for something I'm very rarely going to do I haven't put any uh, crash protection on it one because I didn't want to add to the weight and two I don't tend to fall off it if I do fall off these panniers will protect me nicely in fact my old bike I fell off with the panniers on and I had engine bars here and that got a bit scuffed up but survived the GV ones these are GV but badged as Triumph 
and I scuffed that up and I broke that and I broke this but um, I didn't know that was broken until I took it off and the, the clasp inside was broken but it didn't really make any difference I never got it fixed it was fine but like I say that was after riding all day and parking it up a hill and with leather trousers on which stopped me putting my leg out when I got a bit unbalanced won't talk about it too much um, I don't intend to do that again so replaced by the GT Pro or the 850S now I've not ridden the 850S um, that's the bike I would have bought because I didn't want all the bells and whistles and the GT Pro is quite a lot of money but I didn't want to review this bike until I'd ridden the GT Pro just to see how much of a better bike it was and I was very fortunate that this had a 6,000 mile service and they let me have the GT Pro all day so I rode it from something like 10.30 till 3.30 something like that so I really got to know it and uh, yeah had stronger brakes and um, this bit here looked quite nice was all redesigned and looked quite nice um, and the, the engine sounded a bit more throaty um, but that for me was the deal breaker now I know lots have been said about the vibration so I want to be uh, talk about it a little bit more detail so that you know so I got off this bike and which is buttery smooth and I started up the uh, GT Pro and the first thing I felt was a bit of vibes in the handlebars and a bit of vibes through the saddle now when I say a bit I mean a bit it didn't bother me at all like loads of bikes like I rode the BMW S1000 XR not knowing about the vibrations in the bars and I hadn't noticed them very nearly bought that bike I'm glad I didn't but I very nearly did too tall beautiful bike um, but you noticed it and then I rode off and it was fine and then I rode it at 30 40 50 60 70 on dual carriageways on single track on fast roads on slow roads and once it's holding a speed you don't really notice that vibration but if you like if I was doing 30 uh, if I was doing 40 miles an hour in third gear on this I wouldn't notice it if I was doing 40 miles an hour in third gear on the GT Pro I'd want to change up because I'd feel the vibrations um, but at a constant speed I have to say I noticed a tiny bit but not enough wouldn't have stopped me buying the bike but when you did want to give it some beans it felt like a bag of rusty nails it was raucous and raw and vibey and you felt like bits were going to fall off it and so very rough and, and uh, um, I don't know nobody wants an anodyne bike um, <laughs> but nobody I don't particularly like that and for me to have this reverse firing order this is one two three that is one three two to make an engine designed to be a smooth triple into a vibey sounding twin seemed to me to be very counterintuitive I understand why they did it to give it more low down torque and control off-road most people don't ride off-road I think Triumph would have been better off making a road version with the 123 fire in order and the off-road version with the 132 rather than inflict that on all the road goers for me it, it was a deal breaker because it just seemed counterintuitive to me and we'll see what Triumph do in, in the future about it apart from that uh, you could give me a GT Pro and I would ride it and I'd be perfectly happy with it but those bikes if, if you and if you just ride normally and you don't rag a bike at all um, it's a great bike and, and it is a it's a beautiful looking bike I don't particularly like it as much as this one uh, the looks it's, it's narrower here but I felt my foot on there and uh, I felt my leg was touching that but when you stood up it was nicer but I don't really stand up that often so I wasn't that bothered and so that's it really that is the bike covered I'm perfectly happy with it I would be perfectly happy with any version of the Tiger 800 I think it's a very good all-rounder bike it's a lot of fun to ride 
it's it's comfortable it's fast it's reliable there's a great deal of network here in the uk i'm not sure what it's like worldwide but triumph sell a lot of bikes now and there's a reason for that